Hey y'all, what's up? This is Chris from Blackstone Cherry, and you're watching the Helix Hour with Eric Broadbent. Hey, this is Vernon Reed from Living Color, and you're watching the Helix Hour. Hey guys, my name is Gemma Jura. I'm the guitar player for Evanescence, and you're watching the Helix Hour. Welcome to the Helix Hour, brought to you in part by Stuart Travel Guitars. See the incredible Stowaway Travel Guitar at StuartGuitars.com. Microphones for the Helix Hour are provided by Rode Microphones. Now, let's talk some Helix. Hey everyone, happy Sunday to you all. Welcome to the Helix Hour. We are live and joining us once again is a familiar face. A lot of you recognize from our roundtables and other various episodes as well too. And he's also celebrating a birthday today, Mr. Chad Husky. How are you, Chad? Great, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, another year older and very happy to be here sharing it with you and all the Helix folks and the Variax folks. Awesome. Well, that's the thing. All of us are kind of uh, kind of stuck, at, not all of us, but many of us are stuck at home. So we're going to kind of celebrate yeah. your birthday with you. That's kind of Yeah, fun. this is cool. <laughs> May I ask so, if you want to share, how old are you? Um, I have 43. So. Okay. Awesome. Turning 40 for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. Well, I hope you have a fantastic birthday, and we'll have lots of fun with you here today. So everybody on the chat, feel free to uh, wish along uh, your happy birthday wishes to Chad, and uh, we'll celebrate with him throughout uh, this next 90 minutes anyways. So it's a nice pl pleasure to have you back. We got a lot of cool people in the chat, and this is going to be kind of fun over the next little bit. We're going to be talking about this, obviously, today. Things are changing for a lot of musicians. Uh, you know, you were saying as well, too, you were supposed to be playing the other night, uh, things mm -hmm. like that change. So uh, I think yeah, the, this live streaming thing is going to become a little bit more popular than maybe it has been before. So nice to yeah. connect with everybody from around the world. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was uh, messaging. Um, I've gotten to know a few more people through through the we'll get to the very X presets, mm -hmm. but uh, made a few new Facebook friends through through that. And uh uh, one of the one of the folks was telling me uh, this really cool uh, place that's doing like a no no audience uh, gigs and they live stream them and I was watching that for a few minutes and that's cool. Um, I feel like I was kind of a pioneer in that because I've been doing shows with no audience for years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I hear you in that. I have to. So, admit, I, mean, I guess I'm ahead of my time. I don't know. Yep, I, I think there's plenty of times where I would take photos or we, someone would take photos of the band. It wouldn't be me because yep. I was on the stage, and then you'd crop them because it'd be like nobody there. <laughs> you know. Been there and done that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, just shot a video a week before last with a local artist uh, I play some with, and that was the concept of the video. We we shot it with the four of us playing, and then he invited everybody that wanted to come with a guitar. So that when, at one point, we had like literally 15 guitar players on the stage. At the end of the video, the camera turns around, and there's nobody in the oh. audience. So <laughs> <laughs> That's great. He told me the concept. I'm like, oh, so we're just like doing a regular gig. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, like some of these memes you see on Facebook and, you know, Instagram, stuff like that, too. It's like, you know, uh, live shows before the virus, live shows yeah. during the virus. And it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> You got a waitress. And that's I've got it. exactly the same fans I did when all this started. So. I know. That's right. <laughs> well, that's why when I switched over to YouTube years ago, I, I, I mean, at one time our band had an audience. It was we had some. We had a run. It was sure. cool. I'm sure we've all had good audiences and bad ones. But when mm -hmm. I switched over to YouTube, I'd get more people come to watch a live show than I did in the tradition, in the real world, anyway. So it was no loss for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, if you play, even if you're the biggest thing in your hometown, you're still just playing to your hometown. Mm -hmm. You know, with YouTube. Um, and and Facebook and, and the different uh, you know avenues to put stuff out. You do you meet people from all over the world, and uh, it's so cool. You know, I I still love the experience of playing in front of a live audience and that give and take with the energy. Um, mm -hmm. But also the the interaction you get with people on on YouTube um, through comments and shares. I mean, it's that's a lot of fun too. It's a different thing, but it's equally cool. I agree. And that's a lot of us don't have the luxury, you know, like Steve Strelachi and people like that to travel yeah. around the world, you know, get to see all these really cool places on tour yeah. uh, and other artists as well. But, you know, we this is our way of connecting with people in Germany and Japan and, you know, Australia, United States, Canada, all that fun stuff. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. One of the first uh, adopters of the, the Variax bundle, there's a, a guy in Chile and we kind of went back and forth. He gave me some feedback and, you know, and it, it's to the point now where it just feels normal. You know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, a couple of years ago, I'd be oh, this is cool. I'm talking to someone in another continent, but now it just feels the the community's so large and, and it's just so easy to interact that it just like yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and the, the, okay. like there's no geographical uh, borders; you just don't feel it anymore. And it's also at this time exactly. time, it's also a little safer as well too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, everyone's on lockdown, so yeah, you know. So it's nice to just connect this way and. I think the internet, yeah. man, is probably the internet's going to be tasked, uh, you know, like no tomorrow, yeah. you know, these yeah. days. But 
So there's no excuse for anyone to not be watching the show right now. That's we, right. You're all home. That's so. right. <laughs> and speaking of the people watching, maybe over in the chat, I'm not sure if uh, Sandra's already asked this as well, but um, we were having experiencing some problems the past couple shows where notifications weren't being sent out from our channel. Mm -hmm. So do me a favor, for those of you that are watching in the live chat right now, we're going to say hi to each and every one of you in a moment. Just put a one in the chat if you did receive a notification. And Chad told me he just got one just as we were going live. So that's good. Because for someone who depends on you know 99.9% .9 of the content that we provide is live content, we want to make sure you're getting the notifications. So put a one in the chat if you did get the notification, a two if you didn't. And then maybe throughout the program, if you could, it would be a big help to us. Just go to the homepage of our YouTube channel and hit click on the bell. And you'd be surprised what you may or may not have enabled. It'll say enable some notifications or all and i'd love it if you're if you're regular here to hit all so you're notified you know we're not going to be spamming you we're not going to be putting out a bunch of posts it's just when we go live it'll it'll notify you so let's say hi okay we're getting some ones that's good that's a number i like to see i don't want to see too many twos let's say hi to all these awesome people hugh rocco is here r2 r3 locking nut average joe 44 david bb benningfield um brad miller is here hair and friends been watching Richie Castellano. oh yeah Castellano. he was doing a live concert earlier today i didn't oh, get cool. a chance to watch that because i had to run out and get some groceries yeah um butterfly and ladybug show my beautiful better half scott roos hello from the east coast uh frank Rashad is here hey everyone he says hope you're well stocked up on toilet paper and milk I saw a really cool uh, meme shared today from one of my friends. I'm sure he just shared it from somebody else as well, too. And it's like, you know, you go to your website now and you go to check out how do you want to pay Visa, MasterCard, or toilet paper. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll, that was as good a time as any to announce. I have a new marketing strategy for my popcorn. Um, the downside is the bags are going up double in price. But the thing is, you get a free roll of toilet paper with every bag. So Are you I serious? Think I think I'm on a roll with this. You know what I mean? I think it'll go well. No pun intended, right? You're on a roll. I like it. Yeah. I thought it was punny. So. I, are you seriously doing it or is that just a joke? No. no okay. Because I was going to say, that's no. hard to find that many rolls of toilet paper. No, it would be tough to work it. No, I was just messing around. I did see somewhere, though, on a serious note, I saw another uh, share on Facebook. Now, it's not one of my local friends or anything like that, but uh, people were going out to some establishments uh, to have dinner, and whether that's a safe thing or not safe thing, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not here to, to decide. Not my place. I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't. But they were giving out, you know, a papered roll, like a you know, a wrapped up roll of toilet paper as your um, takeaway, whatever you know. Really? Yeah. So that's kind of wow. neat. Yeah. If you need it. Strange. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. What you know, it, we're in, we're living in a strange time right now. So yeah, I don't. Nothing really surprises me too much. I know for most of us, like you're 43, I'm 52 yeah. this year. So in my in my lifetime, I've never really experienced anything. You know, for, like in real life, I've seen this craziness on TV, but I've never really experienced it in real life like we have in the in the yeah. past. And the the Friday last past Friday, I was out looking for obviously needing needed some bathroom tissue, and yeah. you know, down to the last little bit. And so I, I went around everywhere and we, we live in a very, very small village, but we go back into our old town where we used to live. It's like the communities are maybe around 75,000. That sounds large for a small Canadian town, but it's not. It's all the surrounding towns, right? Gotcha. And we tried the Walmarts, of course, first of all. We tried the like hardware stores that sell kitchen things and things mm -hmm. like that. Nobody had it. And then when I came back here, Junior was going to go stay at his friend's house Friday night overnight. And we tried our local variety store. We're going to oh, actually, we weren't going there for that. We went there for some sodas, some, some Cokes. He wanted some Cokes to bring to his friend's house. Look on the shelf and there's about 10, 12 small packs like of tissue. And I'm yeah. like, I, I grabbed four. And I thought yeah. for a millisecond, I was going to grab, I was going to grab the rest. And I thought, no, <laughs> I said to Junior, I said, there's going to be people coming in here right after me. That's true. That's yeah. better off than us or worse off than us. So they yeah. need it sometimes more than we do. So I only took four and I felt kind of good about leaving the rest, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, it, it's that that kind of panic. There's a run on everything because we're told, oh, there's going to be a shortage, which perpetuates the shortage. Um, so, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, thankfully, I, I, well, for my business, I'm in Sam's. You guys have Sam's Club up? Up in Canada, I th it sounds really. Familiar. I'm familiar with it. I think maybe in some of our bigger cities, or a Costco. We do have the Costco. Costcos. We have those. Okay, so Sam's is Costco, but it's owned by Walmart. It's, it's okay. the same thing, exactly the same thing. But uh, I do a lot of I buy a lot of supplies there, so they they have the the big huge packs of toilet paper, paper towels, mm -hmm. water, all that. So I just went and got ready for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're kind of smart too. Fortunately, uh, well, we have to be. We have to be smart for um, health reasons with Sandra's diet. You know, yes. we're buying like a lot of whole wheat flours and, you know, things like that too. Oh, thank you so much, Frank. Uh, oh, that's really cool. Chat. Thank you, yeah. uh, Frank. I appreciate that. 
Um, but we, you know, buying smart, buying vegetables, frozen vegetables, things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you gotta yeah. be prepared and you don't want to go too nuts, but you want to make sure that if they do lock you down, you've got enough that you can get by for at least a few weeks, you know, a couple weeks. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and the thing that, I guess the thing that really concerns everybody and me is just the uncertainty of it all. We, we really don't know, you know, we were talking about this off air, you know, we don't know how big the, the concern should be if we're too concerned or if we're not concerned enough. And I what's know. Gonna so I think that, you know, I, if I, anything, I just think, you know, people um, maybe try not to be so afraid and uh, we'll get through it. Yep. You know, life will go on. Um, the planet has faced this and worse. So, oh, for sure. Um, you know, just be there for each other and, and we'll play, we'll get through it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and, uh, you know how many times I've heard, I told you so from Sandra, I mean, literally it's like every time something goes wrong, you know, we have to have a, a, a plan, Eric, we have to have an emergency kit. I told you so. I heard yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm yeah. getting used to that. I've heard now. that. I've heard that one a few times myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we have, cause here in Ontario, we've had more uh, kind of false alarms and sometimes not false alarms for tornadoes touching yeah. down and, you know, yeah. we should have a kit, like some water, some, you know, energy bars and blankets sure. and candles and all that kind of stuff. But sure. you should do yeah. it before you have to, right? Yeah. Um, so continuing on down in the chat for a quick second, then we're going to jump back over, talk about anything you're doing for your birthday, and we'll get right into some fun Variax discussion today. Uh, cool. So Brad Miller says, uh, out doing some supply runs as well too. Uh, David says, uh, this week has been crazy for sure. It's a wake-up call for a lot of us, and I think it's going to bring a lot of us closer together, whether we're, yeah. we're, we're that's the end goal or not. I think it is. I mean, we're really yes. re realizing what's important in our lives, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Car Carlos Santin is here. He says, happy Sunday, folks. We are corona-free here. Come on in. Nice. Very, very good. Okay, so Scott uh, Roos didn't get the notification. So check that bell later, Scott, if you can. Um, and Joe, Average Joe says, thank you for taking the time to do this, Eric. Very kind. Hey, this is part of, this is my life, uh, hanging out with you guys and girls, uh, talking Helix and Variax and just talking in general with you. Anything music, we love it. Never Too Late is here. Nice to see you, Larry. So cheers, everyone. Um, cool. A lot of people checking out Richie's show. That must have been really, really good. I know he puts on a great show. He puts a lot of work into it. Yeah. Uh, let's go now a little further. Daryl McMillan, happy birthday, Chad. Have some popcorn. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Thank lots, you. lots of happy birthday requests. I'm sure you've probably seen them already. <laughs> Nikki T is here as well, too. We have awesome. a great crowd in the house. I'm going to, uh, Bill Kamenos. Uh, hopefully I spelled that. I think that's, I, I pronounced it right. Uh, Bearded Blues dude is here just coming in from Pete Thorne's show. Yeah, Pete does a great show on Sundays, too. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. I, I uh, speaking of Pete Thorne, I texted him about a week ago and said um, something interesting happened on one of my shows um, recently. And we won't go into what it is, but I said, um, uh, so you're going to have, if you're, I, I want to get him back on the show, especially over on Helix Hour. Now he's been on my other shows a few times and yeah. I said, you're going to have to really, out, you're going to have to top it, man. Here's, here's what happened. So here's what you're going to have to do or whatever. He goes, oh, there's only one way to top that. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite afraid what Pete might do live on the show. It, <laughs> it might be a pay-per-view. <laughs> I'll be tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know what it is for sure. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Frank says, Chad, dude is legendary in Calabasas, master of the very acts and Helix and CEO of the most amazing popcorn company on earth. Chad's Carolina corn official. Love it. Thank, thank you, Frank. Thank you. That's very kind. Thank that you. is, that is a nice testimonial for sure. Uh, <laughs> Ladybug is here. Awesome. Yeah, she says with all this, she's had to stop licking doorknobs. So yeah, there is it. Puts, you know, we all have to make sacrifices. I don't know. We? Yeah, it's yeah. good that you're taking one for the team, and you know, yeah, there'll be a doorknob licking down the road for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. just use sanitizer first; it'll be fine. Exactly. Rob F is here. Uh, sounds like you're the only person in CK who left some behind. Yeah, I think that's probably true. <clears throat> <laughs> Jason Poirier, uh, we got a crap ton uh, yesterday on the Dollar Tree. It was marked up, but they had tons. Good, good, good. Mark Perillo is here. Nice to have you. Uh, Rich Debrett is here and they're getting some good feedback on the notifications. So, oh, yeah. and Scott says he has all notifications turned on and still didn't get it. So we'll investigate. I have a ticket open with, um, with, uh, I was going to say line six, <laughs> talk <to> line six. <laughs> all the time. I was, Frank, can you fix out, figure, figure out why I'm not getting notifications? And Frank would probably do uh, that. That's just the way he is. He'd go the extra mile and find out why I'm not getting notifications. Or that, Absolutely. Yeah. They would happen. Awesome. So what's, <laughs> before we jump into very acts and stuff like that, yeah. and we have a free, uh, very acts preset today. What yeah. are you doing for your birthday? I saw some some brisket getting ready and things like that. But any real birthday plans? Well, you know, yesterday was the it was kind of the birthday celebration. Um, we smoked a brisket. I have to say, it turned out amazing. Oh, it's so good. Um, and then uh, got together with some friends and played some music. Uh, and it was I haven't done that in a while. Just just three of us in a room, guitar, bass, drums. Had a few people hanging out watching and just jammed. Um, you know, no pretense. Just just. It was just, it was fun. It was kind of one of those back to the, oh yeah, I remember why I liked 
playing guitar while I started doing this to begin with. Uh, so was, that was that was a very special uh, night and moment. So uh, really, so today's just bonus. <laughs> I, get, I get to be on the show um, and then uh, catch up on a little bit of sleep I might not have gotten last night. So awesome. Yeah, I guess I guess it's when it's birthday eve. It's kind of like Christmas Eve, right? You're kind of celebrating oh, for the next day, yeah. and then yeah, I had to take a little power nap before uh, before the show today. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, you look you look fresh and everything, so that's good. I, I've got a I have my stuff together filter on my webcam. Okay, so, uh, I'm hoping that works. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I use that every week as well too to make sure. Yeah, it's kind of a make hide the yeah. wrinkles and hide try to hide some of the gray and stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, music Therapy Laz is here. He's saying, thanks again, Eric, for the Helix Stomp live uh, stream uh, tonight at 4 p.m. Pacific. So he's one of our our winners in the um, uh, 12 Days of Rockmas. And nice. that, that was actually pretty cool. This goes to show you um, the class fellows and teams, uh, men and women that work at Line 6 uh, in the Yamaha Guitar Group. So uh, Music Therapy Laz won a wireless, and they were mm-hmm. out of stock. And hmm. Frank was very, very cool and said, you know, we, your winners can't go without, um, without a prize. And it yeah. went from a wireless to a stomp. So awesome. I can't wait wow. to watch that. So we'll check that out. Everybody yeah. uh, check out his channel there and go have a look. Yeah. So, I mean, Frank's, Frank's the best, man. He certainly is. He just is. And, and I, everyone, I mean, uh, you know, it was, it was nice to get to hang out with, with him and Joe at NAM and, um, well, everybody, but you know, it's, uh, I saw Joe at the party and he just gave me a big hug and it's just, it just feels like family and, um, just love that company. I know at the end of the and day, they you... make pretty good products too. That's part of it, but <laughs> you kind of forget guys. that though, don't you? You forget about the product sometimes cause we just have conversations and you know, I was talking with uh, Matt Ferguson there too, quite a bit. And when we weren't even really talking about the company, we're talking about what we yeah. like and we're talking about, you know, crazy weird stuff. You know, yeah. and then that, and then oh, once in a while a product would come up, and you talk. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll go back to the topic for a second. Oh, yeah. But we make, you make guitar stuff. Too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty cool, and it's nice to see you know the the outside of the company, you know, because we we've got to know them all so well. We know yeah. what they like to do, and you know, I remember a couple times here in the summertime, my phone would ring. And it would be, I'd be outside working in the backyard and here's me getting all, all excited, thinking uh, an ego trip here for a brief moment. The phone rings and it's Joe Bentevania on the call display. <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, Hey Joe, what's happening? He goes, can I talk to Sandra for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, that's a yeah, I know. Right. right? Down to earth, and it's it? <laughs> asking about, you know, plants or cooking or whatever. And, and so you, yeah. for that he has one some good cooking photos he puts up oh, and, no. and uh, super cute, cool dogs too. So. Yeah. So yeah, so for that millisecond you get a nice little ego stroke, and then you're like, "Oh, can you put your wife on?" Yeah, and then I'll say to her, "Did you want to talk to me when you're done?" No, he already hung up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, at least he has your number. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, let's let's put all that aside for a moment. This has been all really right. cool. You've been really busy over uh, in marketplace, and for people that don't know what marketplace is. It's a it's a a place that I love. I mean, I'm part of it as well. A lot of our friends are Steve and Jason. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of great uh, great things up there. But you know, it started off mainly uh, for a place to buy commercial presets, uh, impulse responses, yes. uh, things like that. And now I think I, I could be wrong, but are you the first doing the Variac stuff or no? Uh, no, there, there's actually there's one other guy on there that's done a few. Okay. Um, technically, I did include like a very some Variax presets with with the YouTube package I did last okay. year, but I never uh, actually marketed it. Here are some Variax presets. So um, yeah, and, and the the stuff that that he's put on there looks really good. Um, so, but but this is um, I think certainly the biggest scale uh, Variax project that's been put on marketplace you know and when marketplace started um and i joined on i, I was asking andrew bonica uh hey can i put can i sell Variax presets on there and they kind of had to go well let's check and they're like sure why not um so i think like a lot of folks i i didn't even think in the beginning that it to to do that it was just you know helix presets mm-hmm. and um um, I kind of feel like I've got these out and they're, they're people responding well. And it's it, a part of me is like, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I just now think of this? And then the last three weeks of my life trapped away doing this hour after hour, I'm like, oh, this is why I didn't do this. Earlier. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's quite a task. Uh, but I'm super happy with the outcome and the feedback so far has, has been really good. People are really liking it, thankfully. And, um, you know, as much as, you know, the sales are good and that's, that's nice. That's a bonus. But, you know, the Variax has been on the guitar side, the heart and soul of my rig since, well, I haven't gigged 
without a Variax in my rack for since 2005. Wow. And um, I got the JTVs. I got one in 2012, one in 13. And since then, that's been it. That's all I bring to gigs. It's all I record with. I mean, occasionally, just for fun, I might break out the Les Paul or the Strat. Yeah. Just Nostalgia. For, you know, Nostalgia or something. Why not? You know? Um, but it's kind of like you have this one tool that can do a million things and then this other tool that can do one thing. It's like, well, I think I'll go with the one that can do everything. Um, you know, so like I said, a part of it is just, I, I just want to keep people interested in Variax. Um, I want to d- do what I can do to, uh, just help people continue to discover Variax and to see, you know, Hey, this thing can really, you know, help, help me move forward and, and, making my life easier at a show or recording and, and not just that, but coming up with sounds that you would never think of, you know, with real guitars and, and, and you can so quickly, you know, do alternate tunings and that's a great way to write songs too. Yeah. You know, if you're in a rut, put it in a different tuning and, and all of a sudden new, new sounds and, and combinations and, and start coming out. So, um, I just, you know, I just want to share the very hex love, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so far, man, I'm, I'm really happy to say that I, I, it seems like people are out there are, are hungry for this and, and for a product that's been in the market for as long as very has relatively unchanged, I, I, essentially a technology product uh, that, that came out 10 years ago, uh, in the JTV form. This is amazing. In my opinion, the fact that there is it, not just that it's still popular, it's growing. The Facebook group for v- uh, Variax is growing. There's thousands of members. Um, people are just now discovering Variax. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to try to do my small part to kind of keep that going and, and water the seed. You know, I'll, maybe I need some advice from your wife about how to make things grow. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, just I'm, I'm just excited to, that, to see it and to be a part of it. Well, while we're on the very act discussion, just for a sec, I saw a note here as well, too. I don't see him in the chat, but Sandra told me that uh, Dave Murphy's here as well, too. So Dave and his team looking after uh, the you know, manufacturing of uh, very act. So uh, hats off to, mm-hmm. to Dave and his and his folks here as well. But, yeah, I love seeing his posts where he'll show, you know, new racks of very acts is coming off the line. Yeah, That's really cool. Well, the, the really cool thing is. Uh, with the Variax technology, as I told you this off the air, I like to use examples sometimes here on the show where people can really, really learn from something. And, and I'm going to put myself in the same situation because I need the I need the knowledge, I need the experience, and I need to stop um, not being afraid of certain technology. Now, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not one to be afraid of technology, but I have like I've explored Helix and Stomp and and you know Power Cab and all those things pretty in depth. I'm not saying I know them inside note, far from it, but I, yeah. I know the workings of them very, very well. Uh, Variax, I, I, uh, I'm, an, I'm a Variax novice. I'm going to be mm-hmm. right on the record. I'm going to say that. And I think there's a sure. lot of Variax novices out there. Yeah. I think I represent yeah. a few, quite a few of them that are scared to explore. So w- one of the goals, two, I had two goals with this show today. Three goals. One was to celebrate a birthday. Uh, <laughs> two, I really want to, um, you know, assist in any part that we could to get people to see these presets. I mean, they find them anyways, yeah. but I mean, I want to, you know, lend a hand there. And Absolutely. number three, with you being like one of the go-to guys, if not the go-to guy on the internet uh, for Variax, you know, help and tips and things like that, help us not be afraid to get out workbench and things like that. Yeah. And, I mean, here's a funny thing. Last week, I think it was last week when I had Bill Kelleher on the show. Mm-hmm. It was just a moment that hit me that just wowed me about technology. Now, this was, he doesn't use Variax, um, mm-hmm. but he's using Helix inside and out. And of course, you know, people can go to the marketplace, they can buy their, our presets and download them. They got a new rig on their Helix, or they can, a friend can send them an email, whatever, blah, 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 with a preset. And they got yeah. that thing. So Bill was having a hard time emailing me a preset to give away. So he texted it to me. He, he sent it to me in a text huh. message. So technically, you, the Variax guy, I mean, you could be, you know, let's say, let's say, um, you know, you're you're somewhere else, and you're, you, someone needs a Les Paul and a Strat. They don't have one. They've got like some kind of Sears Harmony guitar. You could say, here, yeah. I'm going to text you a Strat. I mean, we can literally that's text cool. somebody a Strat now, right? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like texting a, that's really cool. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, from I mean, obviously, you'd have to be on your computer, like, but I mean, with a Mac and stuff like that, you text it to your Mac, and then you just save it, put it on uh, AJX. exactly. Yeah. So that yeah, that really yeah. wowed me. I was like. We're in a weird place today. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. And, and with, with stuff like Google Drive, I can I can create links on my phone or my desktop and mm-hmm. send it send it to people. I think, well, no, I just sent you the direct file. But yeah. um, it, it's just there's so many, 
you know, I, I grew up as a kind of a computer geek in the late eighties, early nineties. So this is all still like I smile still when I you know, like, this is so cool. This I know so how we are able to move data information and share things with each other. Um, and yeah, share a whole rig for their Helix or, or a whole collection of guitars. Um, we're living in some good times in that regard. Yeah. Well, before we jump into really what these presets and the bundles come with on on uh, Marketplace here, mm-hmm. let, let's talk a little bit about um, and educate some people here as well too. Sure. Like really, okay, so we get a guitar depending on the ones we have. Um, you have mm-hmm. you have a couple. I have a couple. Yeah. Um, and some for the most part, the technology is the same in each of the the guitars. I mean, if there's some custom yes. ones, you get some custom models like the Shuriken and things like that. Some custom alternate tuning. I think I think just the tunings vary. That's about it. Yeah. 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 So what does a person do mm-hmm. if they want to kind of, I, I want to make a, a Stratocaster with one humbucker guitar. What does a person do to create that inside their new Variax? What you want to do, you want to go to www.youtube.com slash Chad Husky. No, <laughs> no you uh, do. That's right. No, that's true. You do. <laughs> no, I, I say that because I do have some tu- several tutorial videos uh, up on how to do this. I would say this, if, if you're brand new to Variax, and and you're a little nervous. You don't want to screw things up. Get connected to Workbench. Uh, go into File and Save Bundle and save it. And you have a backup. So okay. you have a ripcord. If if things get sideways, you can just load it back up. You're right back where you started. No problem. So having said that, um, one of the things I you know when I first started is I would use the the custom one and custom two slots to kind of play around with different stuff. So I could leave uh, all the stock models in place, and but yeah, so you pull up, uh, you know, you pull up a preset, you select your body, which you know, you, I think you said so what strat with the humbuckers, yeah, that you said? yeah. Okay. We'll say like, we're gonna do like an yeah. old, like an old uh, super strat kind of thing. Yeah, super strat. Which yeah, that so that's actually the one that that we're giving away. Through okay, the show. right on. Um, so yeah, you just select the body, and then there's there's a there's a section for I'm I'm pointing because I'm looking. I'm the yeah, no problem. Point and talk, sorry. But so there's a section for pickups. You would just select what pickups you want to do. Um, then you can you can set un, under the pots. I, I like to use the the um, the value for the tone pot to kind of help uh, either rein in the high end or or bring in more low end. Um, you can also move the pickup around on the on the guitar. Um, of course, you know, closer to the neck, you get a, a thicker bass, bassier sound towards the bridge. Obviously, you get get that more uh, trebly for high gain. The other thing, and I've talked about this in some of my videos, that's fun to do, which you would have a tougher time doing this in the real world. Stack two pickups on top of each other, oh, nice. and you know, and if you want even more, switch them from parallel to series, so you're running even hotter. You know, okay. so there's a lot of tricks you can do. You know, put put up high gain pickup with a PAF or, or put a PAF and, and stack it with a telly bridge to, to get that thick, but biting tone. Okay. So, so just lots of, you know, it's really your, your imagination is, is the limit. So kind of like uh, Helix as well too. And here's a good question too, cause I don't know the answer to this. I think I figured this out one time. I was mm-hmm. down doing some stuff to my shuriken and I, I saved some tunings and spots where I didn't want to. I should have been in like in the custom one, custom two, like you said, that's kind of a little playground maybe where you can sure. stay safe. But JM is asking, is there a factory reset on the very ax? I believe you can. If you go into um, the line six monkey program, which is how you, you need to use that to update your firmware. Um, uh, now, one thing, and I mentioned this in my videos, you can't do that through Helix. You can edit through Helix. Through you can get into Workbench, you know, through the Helix. But if you want to do things like uh, update the firmware or reflash or anything like that, you'll need to connect with the USB interface that came with the guitar. And when you hook that up, make sure you also plug in a quarter inch jack into the guitar because that turns the guitar on. Gotcha. Otherwise, you just plug plug in. You don't have any power. And I've done that. Mm-hmm. Like, why, yeah, why me too. Yeah. So that way you can reflash everything uh, if you want to. Again, I think the easy thing to do is, you know, as soon as you open it up, go into Workbench, save the bundle. Then you don't have to go through that trouble. You have, you know, you have your backup. You can go back to square one at any point. And just like we do with Helix, right? Just in case. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Backups. You know, I came from the technology world and I know you are as well. And backup, backup, backup. Save often, you know. <laughs> You know, always leave yourself some room to, to get out of a mess. It's funny. It's funny that you say that too, because yes, I do come from a technology world. That's my living, um, and I always preach to my clients and friends and uh, backup, backup, backup. And I'm usually the one to mm-hmm. l- least backup. I, I do with the music stuff. I do with Helix all the time. Yeah. But a lot of times, I, I on computer, I would not do backups. But I mean, now I, I practically everything is in the cloud, so that's yeah. kind of a nice blessing there as well too. 
Oh, yeah. Google Drive and Dropbox are my backups. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I run a physical backup maybe once a month. I should do it more. But we it's easy to get complacent with, well, Google's got it. You know, <laughs> I can download it if I need it. That's right. Uh, but, yeah. But it's it's funny. Yeah, we, sometimes when you're in a, in a field, uh, when you when you come home, that's the last thing you want to do. Like, plumbers don't always have the best plumbing, and electricians no. have lights out throughout the house. You know? And you got uh, mechanics with a knocking <laughs> transmission and squeezing exactly. brakes. Yeah. It, well, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things I like, uh, what I do with my, I, I do set lists. Like sometimes I go to the e- extreme. I'll export, uh, bund- I'll do a backup, of course, all the time, especially yeah. when going up to another firmware edition. Uh, but I'll do export my set list. I'll export presets individually and I put mm-hmm. them on drive. And what I like about that is one thing that just drives me crazy. I don't have OCD, at least I've never been diagnosed with it. Uh, and uh, I certainly don't uh, shame anyone that has it. Uh, I probably do have it when I tell you this story, is if I have a, create some cool uh, presets on, let's say, Helix Rack, and then I go over to Helix Floor and I'm missing some presets, it just drives me crazy. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you, you don't know what you're going to be playing that day. Uh, or if you want to test something else, you're on your other one, you're like, oh, where's that? So by having them on Google Drive, I just run my, I just hook up to HX Edit, I go, you know, file import, go to my drive, yeah. which, you know, it's perfect. Exactly. You know, and, and the way you're talking about backups, one of the things um, when we get to the presets, I'll, I'll go into detail about, but one of the ways I save this when, when people purchase it, they have the ability to lo- load a bundle, which is everything. Then I have also everything saved as a bank, which are, are the five presets or pickup selections. Then I also have everything saved as individual presets. So you can literally load in, if, if you want to pull up a bank and load in five different presets, you can do that. Or if you like the bundle, you just want to pull a bank in. It just makes it really easy. So you don't have to pull up a bundle and then move things around. It, it's You can drag and drop pretty much. Nice. Um, and I did, sorry to jump in ahead of you, but... Um, I did see a question. I think JM is asking about uh, setting up a patch. It sounds great through the Dawn monitors, but how close does it come to live? Okay. I I didn't see that Um, one. There's another one for you too after that. Yeah, yeah. It's something that that I do a lot. So these headphones uh, have created every Helix patch I've ever used. Nice. And every, everything. Um, Out of necessity, (laughs) I, there's not a lot of time, especially I like to work late at night, so there's a lot, not a lot of times I can crank things up. So I've just gotten used to these. So, But advice in that area for me would be you need to monitor at a level relatively close to how you're going to play it. Now, I'm, I'm not advocating you crank it up and hurt your ears. No. Uh, but if you monitor through headphones at a low volume, your preset is not going to sound good live. No. But, um, and and in terms of using a doll, just this is just my rule of thumb. Everyone else's may change. I gotta go direct USB into the doll, and I try to shoot for minus six to minus eight dB below unity gain. Okay. And I find when I do that, um, when I go play live, it, it's it's a pretty good levels a pretty good representation of tone. It ends up being pretty good. Um, and and again, you know, if I've got the volume, you know, at a pretty good level in my headphones when I go play live, I, I've to be perfectly honest, I've never had to go to a gig and adjust a preset once I got there. That's good, yeah, because you're leaving yourself some headroom there. I mean, if you're on, yeah. like, everything is just clipping or, like, close to oh, clipping, gosh, yeah. you've got nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sorry, that just caught my eye. I just wanted oh, to... Oh, no, I'm glad you did. And I, I missed some of these there. questions, and if I miss them, too, they get funneled to me from Sandra. So she, there's another yeah. good one, too, that uh, she funneled to me, and I see it now on the screen from Jer- uh, Jerome DeJong. He says... Uh, Chad, and or he's asking me as well too. My to me, the answer is no. Uh, he said, "Have you used the DT25 amp uh, or and or the Pod HT500?" Uh, the DT25, I never had the chance to own one or try. Mm-hmm. I actually did try DT50 once at a friend's house, and it rocked. Okay. <laughs> it sounded amazing. Um, but you know, like I was saying, even with the headphones at home, I just don't have the chance to crank up tube amps or amps at all much anymore. Um, now, if I do, I've got the power cab, so I'm covered. But, um, uh, and what, I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Or the HD 500. HD 500, okay. yes. I used the HD 500 for years. Did you? Um, I, yep, I did. I used it um, from probably 2010 until 2016 when I got the Helix. I uh, used it with Variax. Um, what I found with the 500 is there were good, you had to, it, it was a little tougher to get your sound, but like once you did, it was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think the big leap that was made really with Helix. Well, there's a lot of big leaps that were made, but uh, the cabinet modeling is is in my opinion a lot better on Helix. Um, that was kind of the Achilles heel of the HD 500. You really had to kind of 
hunt to find a good cabinet. So what I would do was, I, I think it was it ended up being the Dr. Z 212 yep. and maybe the ribbon microphone. And once I found the cabinet I liked, then I could pick different amps and dial things in pretty quickly. Um, but I mean, for, for what it was at its time, I mean, that was, I love the HD 500, uh, used it for years, you know, sound a good direct. You could just like Helix, throw it in a bag and take it and there's your rig. So, exactly. Oh, good to, good to yeah. know for sure. Um, and, uh, Mark Perillo is saying the DT is a great amp. My go-to for using an amp with Helix. Good, good share yeah. for sure. Uh, Sandra has just shared our Facebook link as well, too. And the only reason why I want to bring that up today, uh, I hate to self-promote, but we're just a couple people away from a thousand members in our, our all things line six Helix group. Nice. So if people want to yeah. check that out. We'd love to uh, celebrate a thousand with you this weekend. It would be great. It's but, a great group. And Hugh also says, uh, Hugh Rocco says, I love the headphones. Um, uh, I don't like, and what does he say? I don't like the kid in my town to know all, I have all this gear. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So instead of broadcasting <laughs> it to the true. world, right? In case they, uh, yeah. So it sounds good in his ears. I yeah, Maybe my neighbors don't need to hear every note I play wrong. That's right. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> I don't use headphones too, too much because I have really crappy headphones. They're, they're, um, they're AKG headphones I've had. I mean, AKG makes some good phones, but these ones are not right. good. Yeah. I use them when I'm doing my live show because they're much better than an earbud that I'm using right now just to sure. get some kind of fidelity. But most yeah. of mine, I create them on my, uh, I have some really nice reference monitors and mm -hmm. I go back and forth between that and power cab. And there's, there is a bit of a difference. Uh, well, there's a lot of a difference going from a reference right. monitor to power cab. And then I just yeah. kind of find the sweet spot in between and then yep. I'll check them. And if they sound good on crappy headphones, then, you know, at least I've got something, you know, I've got the best and the worst, you know what I mean? Right. To go with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a while on headphones, I use the Bayer Dynamic, the DT770 Pros. These are the 80 ohms. Okay. And uh, every time I've asked, why did you do the 80 ohm? It's because that's what Guitar Center had in stock. Ah, there <laughs> so you that's go. That's what I got. Yeah. And they were on sale. But, you know, the thing to me is like these, these you know, I can't recommend these enough. They, they seem really kind of neutral and flat and accurate. Mm -hmm. for, you know, I, they're closed back. So, you know, you have to account a little bit for the bass response. But, you know, to me, if you learn, whether it be reference monitors or headphones, whatever you're using, if you really learn your speakers and, and you know what what you're hearing and you know maybe how to adjust for what you're hearing that that's why i think i've been able to create them in the headphones and then go out and play live and it's fine because I, I kind of know what i'm getting i know what you know if that makes sense you no know, it does make totally makes sense yeah, yeah yeah i think it's very important if you jump around with d different references um different speakers and things it's you're, you're kind of i think you're, you start chasing uh, you're like oh it's too basic oh now it's too much mid-range you right. know Right. That sort of thing. And you got to know, just like creating a song or a painting or whatever, like I'm sure, has, has there been times where like you've been working, making presets? I know I have uh, from personal experience, you're like, okay, I need to walk away from this. This is, this is I can go overboard and tweak it to the point where it's now going to suck. I can walk away now and I'm comfortable with where it is. Do you get like that? Yeah, absolutely. And and after a certain amount of time, you do start to, or at least I do, and I think it's common, I'll, I'll start to lose high end. Okay. Um, and I'll dial in something and, and after my ears are fatigued, and uh, I'm like, all right, it sounds good. And I'll come back next day, and it's it's a little shrill, and I have to pull the high end back. I'm like, oh, should have stopped about a half hour earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Because I end up wasting that time and having to go back and fix it anyway. But yeah, I, ear fatigue's a real thing. And yeah, there are times when something is under the microscope so long, you 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 can lose focus. Um, I had to do that a lot building these Variax presets. To be honest, um, it was so time consuming. I would just have to put it down and walk away and go, all right. I need to reset, re reset my mind, reset my ears, and come back fresh in, in a, you know, in a few minutes or an hour or whatever. Um, it was quite a lot of hours went into that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I know it goes into making Helix presets, but now we're talking some uh, uh, a guitar now that's going to affect how you're going into a Helix preset. You yeah. know, so that that's you're kind of a double-edged sword. You know, you just yeah. got to work nice with Helix. It's got to sound like a real Guitar X, whatever that you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. do not envy you one bit. <laughs> so thank you for so what you're doing. Kind of, yeah, just, just to kind of bridge into that, um, you know, yeah, so, you know, with Variax, there's so many different body and pickup configurations. So I, to kind of explain, you know, so the, the tweaked stock bundle launched in the early part of the week and then all the custom banks launched uh, towards the end of the week. Um, and I, I kind of realized after everything came out that, that even though it all made sense in my head, um, it wasn't entirely clear what all the different bundles were so i'll take a minute if i may and, and kind of explain that Please it's, yeah. it's kind of like I, I remember in in high school we would kill time back in the windows 95 days playing solitaire and you'd be staring at the screen and someone would walk by and look over your shoulder oh move that card there and i've been staring at the screen and see it so it's kind of those things i was just staring at this for so long that that it made sense to me and maybe not 
everyone else. So sure. having said that, so what, what the tweaked stock bundle is, is essentially that it is everything. I tried to stay true to whatever the guitars were. I didn't do anything crazy. It was just, I tried to dial everything in. I tried to volume balance everything across the board. Cause that's one of the things that people have always you know, complained about, you know, well, this, because, you know, in the real world, a Les Paul's generally higher output than a Strat or a Tele. Sure. So they just, I mean, line six just went for accuracy. So, um, I tried to go for more idealized sound, but not going out of the way. I tried to stay with the pickups that the guitars would have come with and, and that sort of thing. You know, the custom bank one and two, uh, you know, I took a little more liberties with that. And that also comes with, um, a Helix preset that has snapshots that'll take you through, um, you know, different tunings just to, so you can kind of get a feel for that and see how Helix, uh, controls that via snapshots. And also it has, um, I've done some, I've kind of got a parametric EQ dialed in for acoustic tones. Nice. Uh, some folks asked me if I did a lot of tweaking on the acoustic. There's not a whole lot of, uh, parameters to change on the Variax with the acoustic, but the thing to me was, you know, finding the right EQ, I would record dry into my doll Put, put the guitar down, run it, and, and start using a parametric EQ to, to find the right frequencies and the wrong frequencies, and I translated that back over to Helix. Um, so when you buy that bundle, you, you get a very versatile preset that even if you don't end up using it as is, it gives you a lot of tools to start with. Um, so from there, I have a lot of custom banks, and those two products don't really overlap. I, I didn't... I didn't, you know, because some folks have asked, I don't, you know, obviously they don't want to buy the same thing they just bought over again. Exactly, twice, yep. Yep. So the the custom stuff is like, there'll, there'll be a Strat and I'll have, t I forget, 10 plus banks. Or there's a Tele with that. And so what you'll get is there'll be a Tele and then you'll have the standard Tele pickups, the 72 custom Tele pickups. You'll have the Tele with PAFs. You'll have the Tele with mini humbuckers. Tele's with PAFs. You'll have the Tele with the Stratocaster set up. And so I did that. I went across kind of all the you know, more popular bodies and 12 string, you know, all of them. So, you know, I tried to give like if, if you're a Les Paul guy, here are, you know, this many variations of, of the Les Paul. Here are this many variations of the, the Gretsch. Here are this many variations. And also did uh, two things. I did one with the neutral body. Okay. Same setup, and then um, one of the ones that folks had used for strap bodies over the over the years was the plank, the mace. You know, I think it was the Dan Electro, maybe. Okay, right. I think. And anyway, um, so I did that. There's a set of that with all those different pickup configurations. So there's all kinds of stuff across the board. Then I have you know the the mega bundle I, I called it, which is all that. I think in total it's 84 banks, which is 420 presets. Wow. So it's a lot. Uh, and then there is an everything bundle, which is the all of the the mega custom stuff and the tweak stock. Um, you get um, the the Variax preset I was talking about earlier. There's another one for acoustic, and then there's a Rev model preset in there because uh, there's a high gain um, bundle. So a lot of people, I think we talked about this a little bit before the show, but a lot of folks have been kind of asking for a high gain. You know, most of them are classic models. So I, I, I did uh, did my best to try to juice up a couple of them and, and uh, give a little high gain juice to them and, and drive and push and that sort of stuff. Nice. Well, we just I just saw a link in the chat right now too. Uh, Sandra shared your link and that's directly oh, to your marketplace thanks. page. So not just for these bundles, but you can see all for of everything. your collection. Yeah. yeah. So check oh, those one out. one quick thing. I, I mentioned this on the Facebook group, but for some reason the individual Strat, Tele, and Les Paul bundles are not showing up right now in marketplace. Okay. They're they're live in my account, but I have contacted uh, support. Uh, I hope to get that remedy very soon. There is a bundle up there called the Custom Classics, which it actually has those three bundled together. Okay. So if someone is wanting those three, which those are in my mind, those are like three classic guitars, guitar bodies. They, you can get that right now, but the individual ones hopefully will be back up soon. I, I'm not sure what happened there. Very small technical glitch. It happens for sure. It, yeah. 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 It, yeah. it is not, what it is. It's showing on your end, but not on the on the consumer end. So yeah, we'll we'll get that. Correct. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. They'll yeah. sort it out. Yeah. Um, and what was the other question there as well, too? I, I missed it from earlier. Oh, uh, Nikki T saying he found adjusting EQ levels on his mixer has helped with a lot of editing presets. Uh, so yeah, for sure, depending on where you're playing, right? You, if you're really, yeah. really loud, if you're soft, it's going to obviously affect things as, as well, too. Yeah, that whole Fletcher Munson curve, it, that's a real thing. It's a very real thing, you know, how our ears perceive 
frequency is based on volume. Um, that can bite you if you're not ready for it. <laughs> for sure. So Sandra's going to share a link here in just a second as well, too, to the uh, free Variax preset. So normally we give away cool. Helix presets. Today we're giving away a guitar, uh, virtual guitar today. i got to make sure I edit yeah. that carefully. I don't want to say I'm giving away a guitar. We're giving away a virtual guitar today. Virtual guitar. That's right. So let's That's do right. this. Tell us about it. And then after you tell us about that, let's, because uh, I mean, we can talk to her blue in the face about all these really cool uh, bundles, but maybe you yeah. can also do a little bit of playing with some of the sounds and let people know. And of course, keep in mind too, what you're going to hear on the audience end is going to be mono. So if it's sounding nice here sure. in mono, and some people are going to be playing in mono, but just yeah. imagine what they'll sound like in stereo. So go ahead and yeah. give us a little bit of a rundown. Absolutely. So in, in honor of, you know, I know you're you're an EVH guy. Uh, the one we're giving away is is essentially like a super strat. It's um, a strat with a with a lot of high, a high gain, you know, bridge humbucker that is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's designed to be that that classic pushed, you know, EVH kind of thing, you know, where you can you can throw it in some high gain um, and and have a good bite and good attack, and it you know it's um it's that sound. Nice. And I thought that would be fitting for this channel. So. Sure. Yeah. So um, I just I dialed up a quick uh, um, quick preset and uh, tried to learn a little bit of a Van Halen song before the show. <laughs> so we'll see if it goes well. But this is uh, basically just through a plexi. Uh, but this is the this is the guitar. <laughs> So, I mean, it's got that, hopefully, that sound, and yep. you can hear the, the attack in it. You know, so okay. So here's what I want you to do for a second because we didn't uh, we didn't get to see what you're playing there. That's that's okay. Oh, but that's uh, and in this case it's good. Uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why. I don't mean to sound sarcastic because it sounds like you're playing like a a hot rod strat. So show that again what you're yeah, playing. Yeah. So I'm I'm using the uh, the 59, uh, which you know obviously looks like a Les Paul. Uh, that was straight modeling, no magnetics. Um, I'm not playing my f uh, 69 today because I got to adjust the neck. It's the, the weather's kind of screwed up the neck, but, um, yeah, uh, no magnetics, all, um, you know, all modeling Stratocaster and, um, yeah, everything you heard come all digital. And, you know, the only analog part of my signal chain is when it, the, the, the cord going into the mo the uh, mixer rather. And that's it. That's the, only, that's the only analog part of the signal. That's pretty so. cool. And it's, it sounds like a, <laughs> like a nice hot rod strat. Um, yeah. I'll ask you a question in a second, but here's a question from JM. He says, can we hear it clean? Can you can you play that same guitar on, on a clean preset? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, let me just flip over to uh, the other preset here. Um, so, I mean, this is a, you know, a bridge, a bridge pickup, so it's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. it's more well, designed for high game. You know, it's a, it's a strat in the bridge. Yeah. It's not a, you know. But if we had just a little, just a little something. You know, it's it's got that. It still has that attack. It you can tell it's in a strat body, but it, it's just a much higher gain uh, version of that. So nice. No, it's got some bite. A real spank to it as well, too. Yeah. Well, here's cool. Here, yeah. Here's a question. Now, I've, I've shared this with you off the air. Again, this is something I'm just trying to assist other people that may be like me that haven't, you know, dove into this. I mean, I play I play in the deep end uh, with no water wings with Helix all the time. But when it yeah. comes to Variac stuff, I have like a I have a water wing and a, an a air mattress. I'm, I'm trying to stay safe when it comes <laughs> to Variac. And what I do normally, because I like the magnetic pickups normally better than mm -hmm. the Variax, and now I, I shouldn't say that, it's not a very fair thing to say because I haven't experimented enough, so I'm not giving enough of a chance. Right. So what I do, and I love, like the Shuriken guitar, I love to play that guitar, it's, I mean, if there was no Variax technology in it, I would still say that's a guitar you wanna buy because it just plays so well. Right, So yeah. what I tend to do, because we've got two SR250s here, I have one tuned to 440 and then one for half step down, if I really wanna do some older, my other music was tuned down, I'll just grab that guitar. Mm. But what could you give for advice because uh, we just heard from you what it sounds like using the the Variax pickups. What could you share for people that want to use cl clean is easier, high gain can be harder to get a, a better tone out of it. How could we get right. the best out of the Variax pickups 
uh, and harder mm -hmm. and higher gain. What should and we be doing? Yeah. Well, there's a couple of options. You know, obviously you're going to want to go for for likely a humbucker okay. uh, model. They did add when the '89 came out. They did model those pickups, the '89 uh, F, you know, um, bridge and neck pickup. So that's a good place to start. Um, in the pickup section, when you're editing a workbench, you can adjust the gain, uh, the gain of the pickup. So if I'm going for high gain, you know, I'm going to push that up. You can boost it up to 6 dB. You know, that's a good place to start. You're boosting it up um, on the section of the pots. Like I talked earlier about adjusting, you know, the tone pot. Um, if you do that, say, with the Strat and you find it's a little too much high end, pull that number down. What uh, 250K is what we were just using. You know, if I drop it down, just for an example, um, let me drop it all the way down to uh, – and we'll switch back over to the other preset. So I drop it all the way down to, to 25K. It's a little darker. It's harder to tell because I should have left it clean. But now I'm going to jump all the way up to, to 1M. So you hear how much more, you know, bite and high end. Yeah. So, you know, like for this particular one we're giving away, I just set it in the middle. So it kind of has, sits right in the sweet spot, in my opinion. Yeah. I, so I didn't have the camera uh, over here for myself. I'm kind of glad because I was grinning like a little kid for a second. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> it's really. It just. It sounds to me like uh, I don't know, running through a plexi, and it's uh, on the on the on the fringe of uh, blowing up with uh, some kind of yeah. a gain pedal in front of it. I mean, that sounds good. You nailed it. That's exactly what it is. And, you know, I did this preset in about five minutes before we, wow. I, I was going to do the show. Yeah. I just, you know, that's the, you know, when people go, oh, it's, you got to spend hours dialing it. No, you don't. I mean, you know, I pulled up a Plexi, um, a, a dual cab block with a couple four by 12s, put a tube screamer in front of it. A uh, little phaser, a little delay and reverb. I mean, it was literally like click, 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 click. I don't even think, I'm, I think I boosted the presence on the amp. That was it. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much out of the box. So, I mean, if they want authentic, authentic Van Halen tones, I know a guy that has some marketplace presets that are pretty good. I would direct them there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> the that. Pasadena collection, everyone go get it. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know, because I hear that to people, oh, you know, you got to tweak the Helix forever. Yeah, you know, not really. You can. No. Yep. I've done it, but yep. you don't have to. But, but yeah, it it just to me like that sound. And when when I dial that in, you know, the grin you had, like when I kind of stumbled on that, I had the same grin. Okay. You know, and I immediately thought, next time I talk to Eric on this is this is the one I, I want to share with him. Nice. I thought well, of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, definitely. I had I had uh, the goosebumps going on. So I mean, he just hear that, and it's just it just moves you, especially if you're a fan of that. Just right for like a race car ready to blow up, but still exactly. in control, right? I love it. And and exactly. I know you will agree with this. And I've said it a million times on the show, and I'll say it a million more. It's not a sales pitch. Um, I can open up HX Edit, or if I had Helix in front of me and just dropping blocks, I can paint by number, just drop an amp, an effect, a couple other of my comfort effects. And yeah. I know if I get to where I got to go, it, I'm, I'm barely going to have to touch anything. Maybe my delay might just be a little too, too, uh, too, too long. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can, exactly. it's that easy. And then now some people won't be able to do that, but in a very little time, you will be one of those people that can do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I kind of, you know, as you were saying, you kind of know your go-to stuff. Yep. You just drop it in and you, again, you might just tweak it a little to taste, but you know, and, and I'm kind of a meat and potatoes in the end kind of player. Um, you know, I, I did an ambient preset I just put out a few weeks ago that was so much fun to make. It's got everything with the kitchen sink in it, um, which is fun. But generally in my everyday play, it's very amp drive delay, you know. I was watching um, that video of yours today, and I can't pronounce the name of the video, but you were using that ambient patch, and you were doing yeah. um, some uh, looping, and you were even doing percussion with it. Yeah. It sounds beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I can't pronounce the name of that song either. Yeah, we'll just say it's, it's a Ross, it's the band. But <laughs> okay, no, you, you did a wonderful job with it for sure. Thank you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So why Thank don't we? You. Um, if, do you have some of your other um, presets that have some custom guitars that you've got in the bundles yeah. that you can show us? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, before so, you do that, um, before you do that, there was a question. Uh, someone asked this before you, sure. you. You can get ready for that. Um, okay. Who was it that asked? Someone wanted to see the cutaway at the back of the uh, uh, the guitar. The, uh, the, uh, if, you, if you can show it. Okay, um, nice. Not sure. Are you talking about the the neck joint cutaway? I think he was saying like maybe right like here? the bottom. Is there like a bottom, uh, like a belly cut on it or anything? Or No, I guess not. Uh, no, it's pretty flat. Okay. But I will say the neck joint, um, I don't know how well you guys can oh, pick we can up see on it. that, how yep. the lighting is. You know, well, I've got my Les Paul here, and it's, 
you know, it, it's a classic design, but that just block. I mean, it's not comfortable when you when you're when you get up high and True. You can't hit that. And so th- this neck joint is is just a work of art, in my opinion. I mean, it's just it's so smooth, and there's no restriction as you come up. Um, the cutaway just feels right. I mean, to me, this is um, it sound, might sound a little blasphemous, but um, I enjoy this guitar. The feel of it is much or better than than my Les Paul. Um, I feel like it. You know, James Tyler made some kind of more modern tweaks uh, to to a classic design, and um, I love this guitar. That's that's actually what he wanted to see, Nick. He wanted to see the cutaway. So awesome. Yeah, okay, it, cool. it is very nice. Yeah. So let's take us through some of these sounds. I can't wait to hear them. Yeah, so um, this is uh, just a Telecaster in the bridge position uh, in in an uh, open G tuning. I don't know if I'm going to... I'll play a Stone song, obviously, but I don't know if I'm in the right key or whatever, but... So it's kind of got that classic Stones vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I should. Be. Is that coming through? Do I need to turn the mic down? Is that no? Actually, no. Right, so no. We're not getting okay. any clack. Okay, cool. Um, so this is Dad Gad with a Les Paul. You know. So you you know, and and the cool thing is, you know, you can go. You got that, and then if you're in a song in Open G or whatever, and you want to solo, you can click back over another snapshot, and you're right back in standard. Or you're you're magically your scales fall right back into place. Yes. <laughs> if, if you're like me, like I'm not great at soloing in open tunings because I'm I'm trying to rewrite the patterns on the fly, and it doesn't always uh, go very well. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the Les Paul, and I've I've found. Um, I really ended up liking the uh, the Les Paul Special quite a bit. Um, it just has a little more of a rounder tone than than the standard Les Paul. Sorry about that. I've, I'm having this issue. I got to fix one of the frets is grabbing that high string. Oh, okay, yeah, high pitch pinch. click. I love that. Uh, actually. Right. Sorry about that. That was an unintended uh, thing there, but, but yeah, that Les Paul special is fun. And you know, the Telecaster took me a while to fall in love with, uh, in stock form. Um, so the way I've got the tweaked stock one, you've got the kind of, you know, you've got the standard bridge, I mean, neck, and then I've got like the 72 class custom 72 humbucker. Then you get to the middle position kind of got that i mean it's just that telly sound Mm -hmm. um the regular bridge um then i've got a p90 which i love this with a little bit of drive on it you know and it and that's i mean okay that's just the telecaster that's just the stock telecaster i mean that's just five presets and you know you can cover all kinds of ground with it. So you can imagine, like with the Tele bundle, you've got um, I think about eight different banks, each one with five presets in each bank. So um, you throw a, a Tele with with the PAF in the bridge, it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, and you know, one of the things too that um, I don't think the Variax gets enough credit for is is really how how effective it is uh, with acoustic uh, emulation, particularly oh, live. I love it for acoustic. You know, in live, you can take the nicest Martin and Taylor, and I know there there are some Fishmans doing some things with mics and all this, but just a standard piezo electric acoustic, it's like you take the finest le- acoustic in the world and and you just made it sound horrible <laughs> when you oh, plug it in. I sold my acoustic because I like yeah. I like to say I had a nice wash burn, but I didn't play yeah. it enough. Uh, I mean, it was a nice yeah. washburn. It was a very, very nice washburn. Uh, jumbo as well, too. Yeah. Uh, but I like, because I like to play electric guitar. And yeah. the tone I was getting out of it, and I got to give you a hats off to you as well, too, because you were a huge help to me with that preset that I did. Uh, yeah. Because as I told you, I don't want to have the uh, Variax uh, pickups on when I'm doing anything else, and I b- vice versa. So you showed me how to do yeah. some routing to turn off the volume on either pickups. Yeah. So thank you on that. Yeah, and if anyone wants to check out, I've got a um, a video that was up recently about input routing, and I, re- I reviewed the video. I was like, yep. oh, cool. Here's here's a here's a little situation I can add to the how to there. So um, a lot of times Helix and Varys can, it, if you can think about it, it can do it. You just kind of have to figure out the 
the exact way to make it happen, but it's it's, it's probably okay. possible, isn't it? It doesn't matter what. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, this is the acoustic with with that preset. Like I said, I've I've got a parametric EQ, compression, and reverb, uh, but. <laughs> And like you were talking about liking to play the electric guitar with acoustic tones, you know. And then, you know. Yeah, you can't do that, can you? <laughs> you know, you can't really do that very easily anyway. On, or or on like a three octave song. whammy bar dive, you know. If, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. you know. So that, you know, and, and live, you know, I've done stuff where there's, there's a, you know, there's an acoustic solo in the middle of an electric guitar sound on the song, or there's, um, you know, Hotel California is a good example, a mm -hmm. capo acoustic and, you know, straight into like a Les Paul thing. And, you know, people uh, might say, they might say to you, well, that's not right. You shouldn't do that because that's not in the, the, that's not the way they would do it in the song. It's like, well, if I have the technology to allow me to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> It's how they would have done it if they had these tools. Exactly, right? You it's know? Another so, you know, people that kind of take that attitude, it's like, well, number one, all right, well, why are you plugging into a pedal? Why are you plugging into an amp? Yep. Why aren't you just playing an acoustic? If, if, if using a tool like this is cheating, where do you draw the line? You know, and I heard, I think it was Pink Floyd said this. Now, I thought this was brilliant. Um, they got a little bit of criticism. Um, they're like, oh, you guys are just rely on a bunch of synthesizers and all this stuff. And and they said, oh, I'll tell you what, you go on stage with the stuff we're using and you make the music we're making. Give it a try. Yeah. And so I say the same thing. I, I'll have, I'll swap with the guy holding the Les Paul straight in the app. I can play that. Mm -hmm. I'll give him this that he's, if, you know, if no one's familiar and looking down at the helix and this and uh, good go, luck, you know, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. If you've never done it, it's not hard. No. Nope. You know, um, I, I just think there's, it's crazy to limit yourself why just just use the tools that are available that's right things things are easier for us today i mean and you still can't none of this technology gives you instant talent and an instant mojo it gives you instant inf oh. instant inspiration i'll give you yes. that definite uh inf infinite uh in in instant inspiration is what i'm trying to say but yeah. it certainly doesn't make you a better player you know and and sometimes too people you'll hear that sometimes people say well I bought your preset and it doesn't, I, it doesn't sound like that, whatever. Well, sometimes you, you know, maybe if you're playing in the real amp too, maybe it might not be the best. So you, you mm -hmm. can't necessarily attack the technology, right? Yeah. You know, um, the thing that, you know, and I try to I think about how I say this cause I don't want to come off as, as rude to anybody or right. anything like right. that. Um, but if you're trying a lot of different setups that that if you hear a demo of somebody playing something and it sounds great and and you load it up, barring that maybe you're running it through the wrong setup or whatever, if if it just you can't get it to sound good, at some point turn everything off, unplug the guitar, just set down the electric guitar and do you sound good playing it? Right. And if you, you don't know, is your is your vibrato good? Is your intonation on your bends good? The way you attack, is your muting, you know? Um there's all these different things that the reason we say like, oh, you know, Eddie Van Halen could pick up anything and it sounds like Eddie Van Halen. Well, there's a reason. Because he's Eddie Steve Van Halen. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Mm -hmm. There was a reason. It was because of the way they, they played and the gear was secondary. So, you know, I think before anyone, again, th these are tools and uh, you still have to know how to use the tools and, and apply them. That's you know? right. Brad Miller has a very good point in the chat. He says, if it sounds good, it's not cheating. That's right. Exactly. That's right. right. It's not like someone's going to put on the radio and go, oh, you know, I really like that song, but I think they cheated to make it. Yeah. You know? Exactly, right? No, it's, no, it doesn't matter. You know, something yeah. hasn't been brought up here for a while, and but this is a good selling point for people considering Variax guitars as well, too. You know, it's not everybody that has a, a big music store in their hometown. There are sometimes people are like, they have to travel miles to get to a music store. So they want to go buy a Seymour Duncan custom pickup, or they want to buy something, something, something. Uh, yeah. And they, they're they not going to get a chance to take it home, put it in their guitar. If they don't like it, got you know, you can't bring it back. Yeah, uh, people have mentioned this on the show before too, where you can go into Workbench and try. Okay, what's the yeah. P90 sound like? Or I've never even heard of P90. What's it sound like? Pop one in, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I when I got my uh, 59, I saw I had a Variac 600, the previous generation. Mm -hmm. I sold it to a guy who was just getting back into the guitar. He had played when he was younger, and I told him, and he, he loved it. But I, I said, look, even if if you end up not using the Variax you you're new to this you you don't know what you like yet because mm -hmm. you don't know what the different what's out there you might love a telecaster or you might not and or you might love you might be a les paul guy i said you can take this guitar and you know you have a good approximation of all these different instruments 
And then you may go, you know what? I love a strat. I may end up buying a high end strat. Like, Great. But, you know, this is a good way to audition all these different sounds and, and figure out what you like. And then, you know, for me, I've decided I can get as good or better sounds from this guitar than any of my other ones. And this does everything and just makes me smile. <laughs> so I use it. <laughs> exactly. Well, here, here's a piece of advice I'll share. And I promise I will practice my own advice because I'm not following this advice yet. But when it comes to Helix, this is advice I do follow. I've preached it and I follow it. Like, try to get out of your comfort zone. Try some amps, try some effects that you would yeah. never normally say, like, I've never played this amp and I never will, but how do you know until you try it? Then you're like, wow. Right. So try this yeah. with Variax. Maybe you've never played a Telecaster guitar. Maybe you've never played a Dobro or, or whatever. Do it. But try yeah. some of these things and you you either may, you may hate them, you may love them, you'd be surprised, and it just may take you to a place that you never would have been before. And then, of course, yeah. by experimenting now, too, with your presets and your bundles, uh, there's a world of guitars out there that you may have never had a chance to try. So try to get out of the comfort yeah. zone. Absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned Dobro. I mean, I, I've never owned a Dobro and nope. don't know that I ever will. No, nope, um, I won't. You know, but I, I'd, I'd have one now. <laughs> That's yeah. great. You know, and you. So, you know. You know what I'm hearing? I'm, okay, that is so good because, and I'm really glad I just happened to think of Dobro. I don't know where I pulled that one out, but had I not said it. I had to load it, so I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> and I swear on everything holy, this was not part of the show today. I did not have that on my cheat yeah. sheet notes. I got my iPad right here. People can, they can see my notes. You can't see my notes. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's yeah. no Dobro. Yeah, there you go. There. It came in. Uh, anyways, that sounded like there was a, now, and it, the microphone was not picking that up. Uh, th so that's not oh, your, okay. and it sounded like a Dobro anything. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's, again, that we were talking about acoustic. It's like when you plug in a piezo acoustic guitar, you're getting just straight off the bridge. Yeah. When you're using Variax, you're getting a, them having a microphone in front of a guitar. So you're getting the room it was in. You're getting, you know, to an extent. Yeah. You're getting, you know, you're getting the whole thing. And that's about the extent of my slide play. But better you know, than mine. Better than mine. <laughs> I know. I know how to stay in my lane. There you go. But um, but yeah, it, it has that. It, it sounds, you know, and it, it's at first it's a little weird because you're like you're looking down and you're you're seeing essentially a, a Les Paul or a Strat, you know, mm -hmm. and you hear that. You know, it, it's fun. It and, is. Yeah, I have this kill. So that's w with the 2.8 and up firmware, you can uh, uh, adjust string volumes now yeah. by snapshot. You can turn some so, off if you want. Yeah, so um, the bottom string's dead because, you know, in Open G, a lot of guys will just, Keith Richards is one, he'll just take the bottom string off. So that way you're left with a low G. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to even worry about missing that bottom string. It's just off. Um, so, which is, it's pretty cool. Well, think it of just, it this way too, for some of the hard rock players. I mean, here again, the comment comes up, well, that's cheating. Let's say you're doing some power chords. You're only using four strings, whatever. And, yeah. you know, sometimes if you're really aggressive in the moment, you're hitting some open slack and, and, you know, getting some string clack, stuff like that. Turn those strings off. Doesn't matter how hard you hit them. And, you yeah. know, and then go on to the next snapshot and all those strings are back on or it's a different tuning. So just because yeah. just, it's not cheating, it's making the song, it's making the performance better. I, I agree. And uh, maybe I'll show a little bit of my bias in saying this, but to me, cheating is, uh, you know, having people pay to come to a concert and you hit space bar to play. I agree on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that might be considered cheating, but whatever. People enjoy it and then they paid their money and they have a good time. So it's really not, but I'm just saying having a little extra options on the guitar, you're still playing the guitar. You're still playing music. You have to make the music. It's not, you know, if I was able to just bang it out and then the whole guitar does plays. The, okay. Now that's mm -hmm. like, I want to be the one making the music, but it's, these are just tools. They're just tools. I don't think it's cheating at all. I just like watching your video. The one we talked about earlier, the, the cover that you did, I, I would much rather watch someone like a solo person with either either do, using Helix to loop or a third party mm -hmm. looper or things like that. I yeah. find that amazing because you're in the moment. You got it. And I mean, I'm not talking about prepared loops, like things that you could bring with you. Oh, right. You yeah. know, doing it live yeah. on the spot. And that shows talent and shows what technology is capable of. But you still have to have that uh, male or female player 
per, putting that uh, content out, right? Or like yeah, doing it live on absolutely. the fly. Uh, Johnny yeah. Lee's here. He's wishing a happy birthday as well, too. He's joining in late. Oh, thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, you know, um, talking about that particular with the loop, there, there's there's this fun chaos that happens when with live looping. And I had the luxury of just sitting here and being able to um, hit reset if I needed to stop the camera. Mm-hmm. But but there's this fun chaos of it could go in it could go in, in any different direction. You right. know, the loop may not come out perfectly. Uh, that video happened to be the first take. Wow. And it, it felt so good. And, and you've probably had this experience. As soon as I stopped, I held my breath at, to make sure the video got captured, the audio got captured. Mm-hmm. I was just on the edge of it. I'm like, okay, good. We're good. Now I can edit it. Like, you know, that fear of did it get everything right? But, yeah, especially you know, with a good performance. It, it, yeah. And there's, to me, music, it, what makes it special is when you hit those moments where you feel something. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that's a song that that I've loved for years and has a lot of personal uh, meaning and attachment to it. So that was one. And when I was building that ambient preset, there was a, t- a, so- a sound or a tone that, that I kind of stumbled. I'm like, that makes me think of that bowed cello part. And then that's what gave me the idea to, to do the cover. But uh, that was a lot of fun. Again, Variax. I mean, I was using, I think, the semi-hollow body sounds and it just had that nice warm round tone for it that just kind of works nice another happy birthday wish from you as well or to you uh, from paul terrio jumping in saying thank happy you folks, happy birthday thank you so much nice. thank you paul this is kind of cool because you know, a lot of us are, we, t- we mentioned at the top of the show that some of us most of us some all of us whatever are kind of cooped up at home whatever and uh, now yeah. we get to kind of celebrate chad's birthday with him we're uh, doing it worldwide we've got people from quite a few different uh, countries here right now so we're celebrating yeah. around the world with you Thank you. I just, yeah, I truly appreciate that. I really do. Um, it, it, it means a lot. I, I Like we're talking about just, whoops, sorry, connecting with people all over the world. And it, it starts to become like your family, your friends, mm-hmm. or, you know, you may, you know, and we've talked about this on previous shows. When you go to NAM, it's like you already, you, you, these are like friends you've had forever and you just knew each other through Facebook or what, you know, or whatever. But you, um, it's just, that's a cool thing. It's a very cool thing. One question I want to ask you, um, earlier you were talking about having one of your shurikens in standard and one in, in E flat. I'm just curious why you would physically tune it rather than relying on the alt tuning is um i'm just curious that's a very good question that's a that's a good question and a fair question um and because right now this is my honest answer because i until i'm trained a little bit better uh, and Mm -hmm. it's it's also being afraid it's a it's being afraid to go down you know a rabbit hole that i haven't started digging yet um i like the sound of magnetic pickups better i just to my ear okay yeah only to my ear uh, only yeah. to my ear. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I just yeah. love that sound. And I also uh, like the feel. There's a big difference in feel in the string yeah. tension. You'd think going down a half step is not a lot, but it's, it's slinky as all heck. Oh, but yeah. I'm yeah. going to make a commitment, and I'm going to commit to you first, and, and there's people witnessing <laughs> here as well, that I am going to embrace the alt. Because I, I love it for acoustic. I use it all yeah. the time for acoustic. But I just have not experimented with electric guitars and dirty, and I um, I usually play you know pretty pretty high gain stuff like your fifty one fifties you know that kind of stuff right yeah yeah so I'm going to commit to it and I'm going to um I'm gonna I'm gonna discover more and I want to become better because yeah. I want to be able to preach that as well and I and, yeah. and I never preach anything yeah. I don't believe in right yeah so yeah absolutely that's great and I, I'm not, I wasn't I'm you know trying to challenge you I was oh just no curious. I'm glad you did I'm glad you did trust me yeah. Yeah, but um, the reasons you you brought up make sense too. I w- I'm so used to using the uh, modeling. I, the the thought of you would need it for the magnetic side didn't even occur to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, and yeah, there is a different feel. And two, just to throw this out, you know, guys that like that feel of a little less tension on the strings, you can keep your guitar in E flat and use Variax to put you back up to standard. Yes, that's so true. It, if you like that feel, have that feel, and then you know be able to, to uh, have the Variax take care of the rest. Yeah, that's... Not uh, cheating, by the way. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm, I am really glad you asked me that question because this this is a testimonial that I will say, if I don't believe in something on this channel, I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to say this. So uh, because I haven't embraced it yet, I couldn't give a full, um, honest testimonial, right? Because I, yeah. I, I've been f- afraid of it. But what you're showing us today, 
uh, and, and and obviously having a good player helps a lot too. I mean, you're a great player the, oh, when you're demonstrating you. like the tellies, the dobros, especially that that, that dobro blew me away. I swear oh. that it was it mic'd in a room. It just sounded really, really good. And that was mono. Yeah. I'm listening. Not only am I listening mono, I'm listening with one earbud, and it oh, sounded, wow. it sounded yeah. really good to me. So I can imagine what it sounds oh. like listening, uh, you know, on a, on a bigger system. Uh, yeah. But awesome. And here's a couple other questions as we get close towards the end of the program. Uh, sure. Rich Debrett says, would the 59 uh, be close to the feel of a PRS neck? I would have needed to have played a PRS to answer that question. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I don't. I, I may have picked up a PRS once or twice in my life. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, aren't PRS slightly different scale? Aren't they kind of in the middle between the Strat and the Les Paul scale? I think so. But I do remember playing a 59, that uh, not this year's NAM that we just went past, but the last year's NAM. I remember playing that real nice uh, 59. It was a black one they had there. Uh -huh. And it felt like the PRS I had a little bit, minus the fact that this is one thing I don't like about PRS up at the heel is the big block. I know yeah. that, that I just, and nothing, no knocking PRS. I just, no. that block it, is awkward. Whereas you showed me on yours with that nice cutaway there that oh, Nikki was yes. asking about, it's just comfort. But if, it, it is a little so similar good. depending on the model of PRS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It Okay, yeah. I mean, that... Uh, I want to say, like, with an asterisk, yes, it does. Somewhere, but, yeah. So probably you'd be you know, I also don't want to just say something to be saying it that I don't, yep, you know, very fair. I don't have, you know, exact experience with. So. No, nope, very fair. It's good to be honest. Um, and uh, Jerome asks, uh, well, first of all, says happy birthday. And uh, And here again, this will just be speculation, and none of us know these answers, but it says, what do you think the next version of Variax will be? What improvements will they do? Maybe that we could rephrase that question as well, too, and say, what would you like to see? If, uh, But, I mean, you know, answer his question. So... Uh I'm I've got no problem. so the, it was says, what what would we like to see in the next Variax? Uh, what do you think the next the version of Variax will be and be. what improvements will they do? You know that I, I wish I had like some inside knowledge. Well, I couldn't share it if I did, but um because we'd be under NDA if that was happening. Right. But I don't. Um just guessing. I mean, I'm guessing now that you know Yamaha Guitar Group. You know, I I, I would be surprised if Yamaha wasn't involved with the guitar side. I guess physically, I'm just mm -hmm. just guessing at that point. But you know, I would like to see the biggest thing for me would be to take the modeling from. I feel like right now we have HD level modeling right in the Variax, and tweaking and dialing in the Variax feels very much to me now like it felt dialing in the HD 500. The sounds are in there. You just have to kind of hunt for them, and it takes a little bit of time to get there. Um, I, primarily, I would love to see uh, them go to like a Helix level modeling with the guitars, you know. Um, whereas I've just been hours dialing in where you could just like Helix, you could pull up an app and it sounds great. Um, and there's not a lot of you know trickery or or you know a lot of time needed. So that would be one thing. Um, you know, I just I'm so happy with with Variax. It's hard to think of of you know too many things in reinventing the wheel. I would just like to have it Helix level tones out of the box, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and maybe an easier way. You know, like right now um, I do, which I do this with Helix too. To be fair, and the UI on Helix is amazing, but I do most of it with the uh, HX Edit. You know, I don't do a lot of editing. Like if you're setting up alt tunings and stuff, it's it's kind of to be honest, it's kind of a hassle to do it on the guitar. Yeah. Now with with being able to do Helix snapshots, it's that solved that problem. But you know, it'd be kind of cool if they come up with with maybe a way of of having a little more feedback or or when I say feedback, like some more streamlined way to define things like tunings or no or be able to see where you're at you know you have the silk screen knobs where you, you get some feedback but to be able to see a little more of what's going on that might be cool mm -hmm. um but yeah the main thing for me like just i just want i want that next generation of tone you know <laughs> can certainly, certainly can't uh, i mean it can certainly uh who knows what it could be from now i mean we're, we're loving yeah. it as it is now it's hard oh, yeah, it's yeah. hard to fathom yeah, what I mean, it could if be this is it i'm, I'm still using it from now on exactly. you know what i mean so that's why I'm not. I, I'd love to see a new one. I, I don't. I truly don't know what the status of that is because uh, I don't work for Line Six. But um, love to see a new one. But I'm not putting this one away anytime soon. That's good to know. That's good to know for yeah. sure. A couple other really good um, links here as well. Too actually, Brad Brad Miller earlier was asking too. He says Line Six needs to get some uh, merch for the larger fellows. So um, I'm not sure what they have, but we also have some too. There might be one that's pinned at the top of the thing. We have Sandra just made some really cool kind of uh, a pulse looking logo for the Helix Hour. We have those in all sizes, I think up to triple X, I think. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. So check those out. You can take a look at broadstash.com. We have all kinds of Helix Sour yeah. shirts. Uh, I fall into the category of needing that large <laughs> shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some you, days more than others. There you go. Depends, depends. How, much, how many hamburgers I've had that week. That's right. Uh, here's a question. There's two really good questions. One from Alan Willis says, or Wills maybe. Sorry. Uh, since the model knobs on Variax are static, any hints for keeping things straight when you have different models loaded than what the knob indicates? Uh, you know, consist for me. I can only answer how I do it. Is is I I live in my custom one bank ninety percent of the time. Okay. Well, actually, I, I say that, and it's funny now that I've tweaked all these. It's it's actually made my life a little more complicated because now I've got a lot of different sounds I like. You know, for years I just had my custom bank one. I knew every position because I, it was like a five way. Um, but uh, I would say just. It, it, you know, obviously there's no way of having visual feedback. You know, one thing that I could suggest if you're a Helix user and you use VDI, you know, use, have your snapshots set up to uh, select the guitars you want to use for particular songs. Mm -hmm. So you may not have to necessarily memorize where to, you know, to set the Variax, the Helix, do that ahead of time. The Helix will, will do the work for you. So you don't have to remember it. That's right. That what sense. I, what I do sometimes too, and especially in that new preset, um, that I have that has a uh, three, three amps and then uh, and a bonus acoustic. If you have a Variax, mm -hmm. I, I even want the extra step just in case. And I thought of myself first because I, I'm making these presets for me. I, I love the tone, but yeah. it, the, the bonus is we can sell them. I want to be happy first, and if you're happy, that's great too. But I yeah. also made it so when I'm on the acoustic, if I just for some crazy reason reach and hit my five-way toggle, if you're playing a five-way toggle, it's not going to yeah. affect that I've locked that out. I mean, you could yeah, lock your yeah. tone, no tone knob out if, if you want. So you, mm -hmm. I could turn off three strings if I want. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what that's I do. That's cheating. That's so I know, cheating. I know. <laughs> but that's one of the, the beautiful things, right? And yeah, I guess you yeah. nailed it on the head. So use use Helix as much as you can, you know. So yeah. you, and you got your scribble strip. Take tell, advantage of it. That's right. That's right. Use your feet, not your hands, because I mean, just step on it and focus on staying on the guitar. The more you got to take your hands off yeah. the guitar, the more room for air. Yeah, and the thing too is, you know, if Helix, if you put a little, you know, work up front to get the Helix set up for a gig, you don't have to think about it at the gig. No, you just step through your set, and and I I do that, and it's so freeing. You know, back in the the days of a real pedal board, like there's always you get to the gig and something would hum or a cable was messing up or this or that, you know, and it just so took away from the from the experience of just playing music. Um, that has kind of been cured for me anyway with this with this rig. It's nice. I mean, it's one of the things where I know I can appreciate when people go out and buy a Helix. They've made a you know a rather you know um, expensive investment, and and I like sure. to use the term investment because it's a, it's something that you're going to use probably for Absolutely. many many years. Uh, yeah. And I know sometimes there's a lot when we say you should get a Variax too. You know, and that's another commitment. But the yep. two, I mean, you want to talk about a toolkit and just what you can do. Well, and here's the other thing. This has saved me so much money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I right, right. <laughs> there are so many guitars and amps and pedals I have not bought because the last electric guitar I bought was 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 the the JTV sixty nine in two thousand thirteen. Okay, the one before that was this fifty nine in two thousand twelve. I haven't bought an electric guitar since. Wow. You know, I had HD five hundred for you know six years. I, I bought the Helix. That's it. <laughs> I That's haven't fantastic. bought pedals. I haven't bought anything. So in the end, it saved me money. You it's know? Fu it's funny. The two of them, you might be like this with me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much you like to go to casinos and things like that. But the I two like to play poker. Okay. Well, yeah, that's true. I'm sure you'd be good at that. I'm, I I suck at it. But two of the most boring places to take me is one a casino because yeah. I don't gamble. I don't like to gamble. And yeah. number two, um, I don't like to go to music stores anymore. I mean, I I shouldn't say yeah. that. I go to music stores, but I'm kind of like eh. Uh, I guess no, I, need I, get some, it. I get I, it. I need some picks or something. It. I need some strings or something. But yeah. it's like I don't try out amps anymore. Yeah. And very solemnly, do I play guitars? So I don't like to play guitars in music stores, anyways. Wow. Well, yeah, that's it, the worst. It's it's um, it's cured a lot of it's it's cured a lot of problems. <laughs> is what it has done. <laughs> yeah. You know. And I'm actually I'm with you on the casino thing. I don't gamble like poker. To me, you're playing other people's. So it's a yeah, little yeah, different. Yeah, that's different. To sit fine. down and play blackjack or slots. Yeah. No. Um, no, I get you there. And I'm same way. The, the last time I enjoyed going to a music store because really it felt like a museum. I was in Nashville. We had, we had dri driven to go see Guns N' Roses back in 2016. Uh, Chris Stapleton opened a great show overall. Anyway, we went to Carter Vintage Guitars and it was basically like a gear museum. It was amazing. You know, I didn't try anything out, I didn't want to buy anything. It was just seeing everything. They had um, a 58 burst 
in you know in a glass case. I said, "Well, how much is that Les Paul?" Oh, six hundred fifty thousand. Oh, I'm like, oh, you guys can just hold on to that. Then behind the counter, they had a Dumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dumble very head. expensive. I was like, "How much uh, is the Dumble?" Oh, that's one hundred fifty thousand. Keith Urban's looking at it. I'm like, "Ah, oh, you can have it." Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I because I took a picture of the the Les Paul, and I saw myself. In the, I'd forgotten this. I saw myself in the, in the reflection. I was wearing a Helix T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it was just a happy accident, but taking a picture of all this classic stuff, you know, I'm wearing a, you know, Line 6 Helix t-shirt. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, I actually see a buddy of mine put a question, the CKJJ clan. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask that one. I had it highlighted. Go ahead. Yeah. He's our sound guy. Okay, nice. And and, and super cool guy. Um, and to answer his question, um, yes, I do use Helix to switch my Variax models per song when needed. Um, and yeah, that is that is my typical in a live show. Um, the once they added that to snapshots, it's like, well, you know, now when I'm just jamming, I'd like to, I like having that real time control with pickup selectors, and mm-hmm. and, and I, you know, if I'm playing a solo and I, and I want to get a little thicker sound, I flip up. I want to get more biting. I, I like having that option. But if I'm doing a set where or a song where from the verse to the bridge, three or four things change, effects change. I don't also want to have to think about changing the guitar. So yeah, I'll use I'll use snapshots to just unilaterally fix everything, mm-hmm. make it exactly what I need. That's perfect. I'm glad you addressed that question because I had that one highlighted yeah. too. And Guitar Hack, our buddy here too, he mentions um, yeah. he, he's a he's a Gibson guy uh, and has a lot of uh, Les Pauls. Matter of fact, he has my old Les Paul too. Oh, cool. Um, that was he, a nice Les Paul. Yeah. He says 59 is close is the closest pattern to regular PRS. So there you go. A good confirmation okay. from that. And here's something, too, people uh, probably don't realize, and most people watching the show right now, or a good chunk of them, probably would never utilize this. I know I certainly wouldn't. You probably wouldn't use this yet. But to show you how scary this technology is, what we could do with it, technically, with all these presets, different guitars that uh, Chad's got all the presets for and the sound, you could actually, let's say you're running like... Uh, a Pro Tools rig live. You know, a lot of times people will use that to synchronize video displays and yeah. maybe sometimes synchronize some backing tracks. You could be sending data to and from your Helix as well, too. So technically, yeah. I mean, it is fun to step on buttons, but you you could not maybe not even have your Helix on the stage. It could be a rack, like sure. a, offside, and yeah. queuing up different instruments. Okay, this right at this point of the song, at the bridge, now it, ch- it switches to Chad's acoustic. You know, yeah. the possibility is endless what you can do with that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, I, I'm know just enough MIDI to be dangerous. I, I'm, I've never been a hardcore MIDI guy. Um, so I haven't, you know, that would be a challenge to, to set up for me, but it's totally doable. I know. It's totally doable. Especially I, someone that's comfortable programming that stuff. Yep. You know, and that's that's a cool, like, one of, you know, of course, he doesn't change a lot of tones live necessarily, but, you know, Slash is a big influence. Yes. Um, and the thing that was, was cool, like, he would have, like, three or four expression pedals set up on stage so he could get to a wah regardless mm-hmm. of where, no he, was where he was. But other than that, he, he would just play like his, he said, Adam day has been his guitar tech forever. And he does it all and, under, under the stage. Yeah. So, um, I, I saw a rig rundown and Adam day, like there's, you know, there's one cab that is potentially live on stage. Everything else is an ISO. So Adam will actually watch slash when he wants feedback, he'll watch for, on the monitor for him to go by that cabinet. He'll, turn it up so you can get feedback after they turn so slash just he just plays mm-hmm. he doesn't have to think about any of the gear um and and that's kind of how i like to try to get to uh, a place where the music takes over in the end we're trying to make music in yep. the end i love gear i tweak and 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 build all the stuff and I love it but you know in the end i think we can lose sight of the fact that we are musicians hoping to make music hoping to feel something ourselves and inspire that feeling in other people. And, uh, you know, in, in the day and age, as good as it is, and we live in the best time ever for a guitarist to, for gear. I know. Um, it is easy to lose, kind of lose sight of that and get lost in the we you know, lose, don't see the forest for the trees, so mm-hmm. to speak. So, uh, that is something I always try to encourage people. Like, don't forget to have fun. That's right. Don't That's forget to play important. a song, play music, connect with people. Don't forget that. You know? Very well said. Yeah, especially these days. There's yeah. As we wrap up here, there's a video. I have to go back and watch it. It's uh, I don't, didn't even get a chance to see it yet, but I remember seeing Paul Heinmarsh talk about it on Facebook. He mm-hmm. was doing something uh, probably back in the winter, uh, either just before NAM or just after NAM, and he was doing, just as we were saying, he was doing some stuff with a DAW, sending out MIDI commands to switch stuff, and he was recording bass and drums and guitar 
Right? He might have had some of his his mates over there doing some stuff as well too. Yeah. But he was doing that synchronizing stuff all by switching, you know, without even touching Helix and stuff like that. So I want to go find out how he uh, made out with that and and see. But the yeah. possibility is endless. Yeah. But, but we are at the four thirty mark. We were at the okay. at the Helix half hour. Not today. That's um, quick, doesn't it? It does go by very very quick. <laughs> There's probably about six or seven things on the agenda that I didn't even touch on, and that just means we have you back again. But always, I, always, always available. Again, down in the description of the uh, video down below, we've got several links to your social media profiles, also over to awesome. your entire list of presets and bundles at Marketplace. Yeah. I wish. Yeah, you if the I may, just to just a real quick in two in a minute, just to again just sum it up. Sure. Um, the the tweaked stock bank is like nineteen ninety nine. That is everything that's in the in the very axe tweaked, volume matched, optimized. Two custom banks come with that. Um, past that, I've got the mega bundle, which is everything four hundred and twenty presets, I believe. Um, that is also broken up. If you just want this guitar body with the variations or that guitar, that's out there. Um, and then the everything bundle is forty nine ninety nine, and that is literally everything. It's the tweak stock and all the custom stuff. And um, and I know we're out of time, but it comes with uh, the everything bundle and the the mega comes with I think three or four different presets. The only one I'll just real real quick play. I, there's a, a rev model for the high gain stuff if i could just play a second of that just to let people hear um this is that telecaster with the paf and the bridge i referenced earlier that i like but uh so you can get that ah sound yeah yeah <laughs> big time high gain. <laughs> makes you want to punch a wall but uh so that that's included uh you know in the high gain bundle as well as the mega and everything bundle um so anyway, there's the pitch. So I, ho I hope that clarifies everything. I, I just kind of dumped a lot of presets out, and uh, it all made sense to me in my head, and I realized I need to probably just explain that a little more. So sometimes, anyway. I know, sometimes we hit, we're our own worst uh, uh, devices, right? <laughs> we have to get out, outside and look on from the outside looking in to let you know people know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, for sure. Exactly. So thanks for letting me come on and, and oh, talk about that. My pleasure. Always a pleasure to have you here, and it's always fun and it's informative too. And it's nice to sometimes, obviously, Helix is always going to be a major part of the show. But it's yeah. nice to tie in Variax a little bit, and I, I really need to do that more often. So I'm going to reach out to you a couple times a year uh, for sure to do some more Variax kind of one-on-ones -on yeah. with people. And uh, you'll probably have more presets and bundles, so let us know on that, too. Happy to, to share. Yeah. And and line six, pay attention. People like Variax. They do. Don't forget about it. <laughs> they do. Yeah, keep it going for sure. So we yeah. want to, once again, uh, wish you an awesome happy birthday. Hope it's Thank been you, a man. good one for Thank you so you, far. Brother. And I see a note, uh, our Butterfly and Ladybug, they're having their St. Patrick's Day show. They have a fun ladies show. And it's not just the ladies. They have some guys on the show as well, too, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a fun way to kick off the, the work week, or if you're working from home, it's lots of fun. And on Fridays, they play the old um, uh, public domain black and white fun movie. So it's Friday Fun Flicks. Cool. Yeah, it's you get to see some cool old movies that we probably watched with our parents or our parents loved. And uh, yeah. they're, they're public domain, so they're not copyright protected. So awesome. Go. We had a fantastic... Uh, a fantastic afternoon. I couldn't uh, have thought of a better better way to spend it, talking very acts and what it can do. And absolutely pleasure to have it's you, buddy. Good birthday! <laughs> awesome. We'll go have a celebration, drink after, and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some we'll of that recovery good stuff. from last night with drink. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of hair of the dog, right? That's right. That's right. Well, listen, don't go away. I'll say goodbye to you off the air, and sure. everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. We have a special guest coming on next Sunday as well. We'll be telling you that very, very soon over on our Facebook page, facebook.com/slash The Helix Hour. You'll want to turn yeah. in as well and uh we'll see you very very soon and until next time everyone be safe out there stay sanitized uh look for some toilet paper and have fun with your loved ones for sure and Absolutely. we'll see you very soon until next time cheers see you guys hey you're still here eric jr here reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch available right now in the broadstash boutique quality products and fast shipping visit broadstash.com today Thank you for watching the Helix Hour. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. An extra special thank you to the staff at Line 6 for their continued support. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so right now and feel free to share our content with your friends. See you next time on the Helix Hour.